Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, man. Welcome back, guys. We are back. Got another great video for you guys today, man. You guys know the deal, man. We're going to continue to celebrate Michael Jordan on this channel. We're going to continue to put his career in perspective, right? Got the facts for you guys about Michael Jordan, the 80s and the 90s era NBA. Guys, you know I got the facts. And I want to thank you guys for all your love, for subscribing, for commenting, man, all that stuff, guys. I appreciate all that stuff, man. I really do. And in this video, guys, I want to speak about something that I've heard. I've seen videos uh, done about this, and that's that Dennis Rodman should have won the Finals MVP in 1996 over Michael Jordan, that somehow Michael Jordan, he wasn't the Finals MVP. It, that Dennis Rodman should have won that award. We're going to talk about that in this video. You guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, guys, there's no curses on this channel. There's no foul language on this channel. So turn the volume up. You can pump it, guys. Driving in your car to work, going to school, make, in the kitchen, making breakfast, whatever it is, man. Just pump the volume and listen to the facts. These videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I've said, I've heard, and I'm sure you guys have heard the same thing. I've also seen videos saying that Dennis Rodman should have won Finals MVP in 1996, that Michael Jordan was not the most valuable player in the finals in 96. I've actually heard people say this and make videos on this. Now, this is all new for me. I don't remember at that time people saying that Dennis Rodman should have won the finals MVP. Now, I'm sure maybe some people had that opinion at that time, but I don't remember it being a thing. And now I've seen videos and I see articles and, and people saying this. Now, from the top, though, oh, oh, let me just say this from the start. This video is not to knock Dennis Rodman's performance in the 96 finals at all because his performance was masterful. The offensive rebounding display that he put on was, was all-time great. Absolutely. This takes away nothing from his defensive effort or his rebounding effort in that finals when I make this video. Because there's no way you can say that Dennis Rodman was more uh, valuable in that finals than Michael Jordan. There's just no way you can come to that conclusion, logically. In my opinion, I guess, right? So when people say that Dennis Rodman should have been the finals MVP, what do they point to? Well, they point to what? His offensive rebound, like I just mentioned, right? He put up, I believe, 41 offensive rebounds in that series, uh, putting on a Moses Malone type of performance, right, on the, on the offensive rebounds. Also, they talk about the defensive effort that he gave on Sean Kemp, right? These are things that they'll mention when they talk about him winning the finals MVP or why he should have won it. However, there's two things that we have to think about, guys, all right? If you watch the games, right, just watch the games, or all six of them, not just the games that the Bulls won or, or the games that they lost. You watch all six of the games. There's really no way you can say that Dennis Rodman was more impactful or more valuable than Michael Jordan. You really just can't say that because one thing we must remember is that was a very defensive finals. Right between the Seattle Supersonics and the Bulls. Two really good defensive teams on the perimeter, right? Really good perimeter defensive players. And it was a defensive finals, right? You look at the shooting percentages across the board for all these players. They were shooting terribly, right? People often talk about Michael Jordan, his shooting numbers, right? Oh, he, he averaged 27 points a game. I mean, think about this, guys. Michael Jordan averaging 27 points a game, averaging five rebounds and four assists is a bad finals for him. That's a bad finals for him, guys. Right? He only shot 41%. Think about what that, the standard that Michael Jordan, the bar, how high he set it for himself. That we point to that finals as he played terribly. Number one, we must understand Michael Jordan did not play terribly in those finals. Did he shoot great in the finals? No, he did not. But that does not necessarily mean he played bad. Because he actually played great in the finals. Because once again, what do I always tell you guys about Michael Jordan that separates him from other players? If Michael Jordan's not making the shots in, He's not scoring like that easily, right? The shot's not going down. He finds other ways to impact the game. That's not going to throw him off. He can, he can focus on rebounding, his playmaking, his defense. He can always hang his head on defense. That's the thing about Michael Jordan's greatness. Bad shooting nights do not throw him off or stop him from impacting the game. So when we think about the Seattle Super Sonics in the 96 finals against the Bulls and that being a defensive uh, showdown, what does that mean? Well, that puts more of a premium on the offensive end, right, guys? Points matter more. Scoring is harder to come by. So a guy like Michael Jordan is more important because as, as bad as people think that Michael Jordan performed in the finals by shooting 41%, averaging 27 points, Scottie Pippen averaged 15 points, guys, on 34% shooting. So how bad is that? What did Tony Kukos average? What did Steve Kerr shoot? Ron Harper. 
Luke Longley. Go look at the offensive production by Michael Jordan's teammates in those finals. And you will clearly see why Michael Jordan on the offensive end was more impactful than Dennis Rodman's offensive rebounding or his defense against Sean Kemp, guys. Offense was at a premium. As a matter of fact, I believe in game three, Ron Harper only played one minute in that game. He had like a bad ankle or a knee. I can't remember what it was. But he played one minute in that game, guys. And Tony Kukos had to, had to fill in for him, and they had to pick up the slack. And who did that? Michael Jordan did that by scoring 36 points in that game. The only 30-point performance on the Bulls. So we have to think about these things, right? Right? Offensive rebounds by Dennis Rodman, right? They're talking about his offensive rebound. And they'll point to, oh, oh, he was putting a massively offensive rebounds. Game two specifically, right? He had like 11 offensive rebounds in that game, right? Or whatever it was. And the Bulls won. However, when we think about the offensive rebounds, we're thinking about two things, guys. Right? When it pertains to Dennis Rodman. Number one, we have to think about, and this, this takes away nothing from Dennis Rodman's greatness and his effort. We have to think about who he was going against down low. Who you're going against. Who was the top rebounder for the Seattle Super Size tonight, says, guys? Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp's not known for his rebounding. Was he a good rebounder? Yes, he was a good rebounder, solid rebounder. But why was he a good rebounder? It wasn't necessarily due to his hustle or his rebounding prowess. It was mostly due to his, his athleticism, right? His leaping ability, his ability to take second jump, to jump twice, to quick off the ground. Right, which would grab, allow him to grab rebounds and also block shots. But he wasn't necessarily a rebounder of the level of a Charles Barkley or a Karl Malone or a Dennis Rodman, right? Also, we must think about what else? We must think about who else is on the team that Dennis Rodman was going down low against. Who? Frank Burkowski? Detlef Schrempf? Irvin Johnson? These are the guys that were challenging Dennis Rodman. None of these guys were rebounders. The Seattle Super Science weakness was their rebounding. They didn't have any rebounders down there. So Dennis Rodman took advantage of the situation. Like I said, this didn't take away from Dennis Rodman. Like I said, he did his job. He did what he was supposed to do. Dominate the boards. Absolutely. But we must think about that, guys. There was no one down there. It wasn't like Dennis Rodman was down there battling against these other great defensive uh, rebounding guys or big front line. These guys were not big either. So he took advantage of these guys of lesser rebounding skill. And also when we think about the offensive rebounds, Michael Jordan helped Dennis Rodman get offensive rebounds. That's right, guys. He helped. How did Michael Jordan help Dennis Rodman get offensive rebounds? Well, we have to think about this series, guys. Michael Jordan shot 67 free throws in that series. I believe he averaged like 11 free throws a game. Guys, think about that. He put pressure on the Seattle Super Sox defense, guys. He put pressure on them. That was Michael Jordan on the offensive end. So when people point to his shooting percentage, they say, oh, he shot 41%. Yeah, but he shot like 85 or 86% from the free throw line. He shot 67 free throws. So he was knocking them down. He was making them pay the price for fouling him, right? He put a lot of pressure on Gary Payton and Hersey Hawkins and Detlef Shrimp and Sean Kemp. He put a pressure on all those guys. So Michael Jordan driving the lane, right, at a high volume like that, attacking the defense, putting pressure on them. What does that do? It opens up Dennis Rodman to grab offensive rebounds. If Michael Jordan slashing to the lane, drawing the defense over, whether he makes a shot or not, if he misses it, Dennis Rodman's going to be in position more likely than not, right? Because Michael Jordan's drawing the defense away. Think about that, guys. I'm not saying that every offensive rebound Dennis Rodman got was due to Michael Jordan. But what I'm saying is we have to think about that, guys. Michael Jordan shot six, seven free throws. He was driving the basket. He was putting the pressure on these guys. That went to that. So we have to think about these things, guys. When people say that Dennis Rodman should have won the finals MVP over Michael Jordan, he was not the most valuable player in that series, guys. Did he play great defense against Sean Kemp? Absolutely, guys. Right? That's another thing that people point to, the defense that he played against Sean Kemp. Let's get one thing straight here, guys. Sean Kemp averaged 23 points and 10 rebounds in that series, guys. That's pretty damn good on 55% shooting. 55, guys. When everybody else in the series was struggling from the field, Right, Gary Payton and, and Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, all these guys are struggling. Here goes Sean Kemp shooting 55%, averaging 23 points a game, 10 rebounds, a double-double. So it wasn't like Dennis Rodman was shutting Sean Kemp down. He was averaging 17, 18 points a game, or he was shooting, you know, 40% from the field and, and things like that. Did Dennis Rodman play great, great defense on, on Sean Kemp? Absolutely he did. A lot of things that, that Dennis Rodman did to Sean Kemp is he would put him in foul trouble early in some of these games where maybe Sean Kemp had two fouls in the first quarter or something like that. He had to take a rest. It threw off his rhythm. Yes, absolutely. But let's flip the script too, guys. And remember, 
There were also games in there where Michael Jordan had to bring Scott, uh, Dennis Rodman in. He had to reel him in mentally because he was starting to lose it, right? Getting into it with Sean Kemp, getting into it with Frank Bukowski. You know, th this is what happened what happened out there from time to time. And Michael Jordan, who had to be the leader also, right, that we don't talk about, right, his leadership out there on the court dealing with a guy like a Dennis Rodman, sometimes he had to grab Dennis Rodman and get in his face in that series and be like, yo, man, I need you to focus back up, all right? We got a job to do here. Watch the games, guys. You can see Michael Jordan telling Dennis Rodman, yo, let's go, man. So this also goes to Michael Jordan's greatness, the leadership of him during that series, guys. Right? He was the X factor. You take Michael Jordan off the Bulls, guys. They're not in that series. You take Dennis Rodman off the Bulls in that series, they still have a chance to win that series. They probably could still win it. Why? Because once again, we must remember, guys, it was a defensive battle. Right? It was a defensive battle. Right with a Rodman, Pitt, uh, Rodman average was seven points a game. I think fourteen rebounds. That's not when you were Finals MVP. Like I said, that does not that, that takes away nothing from Dennis Rodman's performance. He performed great. He might have been Michael Jordan's most consistent teammate, or it might have been a Tony Kukoc, or it might have been a Ron Harper, or a Scottie Pippen. This is how the series went, guys. No one shot good in that series. So Michael Jordan's offense meant that much more. There were many times in the series, guys, when Michael Jordan was driving the lane or he would draw the double team or the triple team, guys. He would kick it out to somebody, a Luke Longley, a Tony Kukos, a Scottie Pippen, and they would miss the shot, a Steve Kerr. You know, when we think about Steve Kerr, he gets, his name is thrown out a lot there, right, about, you know, his shooting and, you know, they try to make it seem like he was this integral part of the Bulls dynasty or something, that when he was not. Ron Harper was way more impactful than Steve Kerr ever was, and I've talked about this in past videos. But when we think about shooting, I've talked about scoring being at a premium, right? A, a, a very tough defensive uh, uh, series where the shooting percentages were low. Steve Kerr, guys, I believe in the first, I think the first two games, I want to say he was 0 for 7 from three-point range. 0 for 7, guys, didn't make a single three in the first two games. I believe in the first three games, he was 1 for 9 from three-point range. Nobody was making shots, guys. Michael Jordan was kicking out to these guys, drawing the defense, kicking out to these guys, and nobody was making a basket. So Michael Jordan averaging 27 points a game on 41% shooting is actually a good thing. He didn't play bad. He didn't shoot great, absolutely. But he did not play badly. People say, oh, it's probably his worst series ever played. It might be his best series ever played. We also must think about the mind of Michael Jordan, the things he was going through mentally, right? We think about the Michael Jordan's reaction after he won that championship on Father's Day, right? This was the first NBA Finals he played in since his father had been murdered. A lot of this stuff was weighing on him. Michael Jordan talked about it in the last dance. These things weighing on his mind. I told you the Bulls went up three games to nothing. I had never seen that before. The Bulls had never been up three games to nothing on another team. They, was, they were up three games to one, obviously, in the 91 finals on the Lakers. They were up three games to one in the 93 finals against the Suns. They were up three games to one, I believe, in the 98 finals against the Jazz. But they were never up three games to nothing. So that was an unfamiliar territory for them. I mean, they were coasting at that point. People thought they were going to coast to a 4 nothing sweep of the, of the Sonics. So the Sonics played with a lot of pride, a lot of heart. I give them a lot of credit for that, man. They made adjustments. George Carl was an excellent coach, very underrated, doesn't get mentioned a lot. But they made adjustments, man. Right? They dug deep. But the Bulls played masterful defense. If you look at the first three games, guys, people will point to like I said, uh, different things. You know, people talk a uh, game two, Dennis Rodman's offensive rebounds. But one of the things we must think about in the first three games, guys, the Chicago Bulls were jumping on the inexperience of the Seattle Supersonics. You could tell the Su Seattle Supersonics sometimes they looked like they weren't even ready, right? Those first three games, the Seattle Supersonics, I believe, had 50 some turnovers. I think they averaged like 17 turnovers a game. I think in game one, they had 20 turnovers. The Bulls had nine, guys. That's a big gap. 20 turnovers to nine? I believe the second game was. 16 to 15 or 17 to 16 or and then like the last the, the third game I believe was like 17 to like 10 or something like 17 to 7 I think they had 7 turnovers the Bulls had in one of those games that's huge guys the Bulls were putting the pressure on these guys I believe for the entire series the Bulls had 80 turnovers the Seattle Super Science had 96 guys so 16 more turnovers almost 4 more turnovers or whatever it was a game 3 more turnovers a game whatever it was they were averaging but in those first 3 games it was like 17 turnovers to the Bulls were averaging 10, guys. That was part of it. 
So yeah, guys, you know, when people say, or you hear people say Dennis Rodman should have won the finals MVP in 1996, that's not true, guys. Did Dennis Rodman play great? Yeah, he had an absolutely great finals. But was he the X factor? Was he the reason the Bulls won? No, he was not, guys. Come on, man. Michael Jordan was the only offensive main threat they had the entire series, guys. One game, maybe Tony Kukos played okay. Then maybe one game, Pippen shot okay. Maybe one game, Luke Longley stepped up, you know, and hit some shots. But Michael Jordan was the constant there. Yeah, maybe his shooting percentages weren't great. But I told you, he found other ways, his playmaking, helping on the, on the rebounding, which he did. And his defense. People trying to play defense against Michael Jordan, guys, on the offensive end, when Michael Jordan's the ball on the offense and they're trying to play defense against him, whoever it was, Gary Payton, Detlef Schrempf, Hersey Hawkins, Nate McMillan, whoever they had out there, uh, Vincent Askew, whoever it was, had to, had to really put forth an effort, right? They had to expend energy to do that. That takes away from them on the offensive end. Right? That takes starts out of Gary Payton's offensive game. People are like, oh, Gary Payton should have guarded Michael Jordan for the first three games, and that was what... You know, this nonsense that you hear. There was a reason why Gary Payton was not guarding Michael Jordan those first three games all the time, guys. And they tried something. They tried to put deadlift shrimp on Michael Jordan in game one to start games, to write with the height difference, try to throw Michael Jordan off. I've told you, they used to mix things up like that for Michael Jordan all the time. Put bigger guys on him, then put shorter, quicker guys on him. You couldn't just play one guy against Michael Jordan all game, all series. It won't work, even if the defender is Gary Payton. Because Gary Payton did cover Michael Jordan or guard Michael Jordan from time to time in games one through three. It didn't make much of a difference, though. Yeah, Gary Payton would win his battles, and so did Michael Jordan. And another thing we must remember, guys, is that Michael Jordan was 32 years old at this point. Gary Payton was 20, I think 27, guys, or 28. He was in his athletic prime. Michael Jordan was at the tail end of, end of his athletic prime. Right? He wasn't athletically prime, like a Kemp and a Peyton. Peyton was in his prime of his athletic prime. Just one of the defensive play of the year. So for Michael Jordan to have five or six years on him, you know, what is Gary Payton really trying to brag about or say that he gave him Michael Jordan problems? Okay, you're a great defensive player. What is that saying? But this is the thing I'm talking about. Guys to cry and make it Michael Jordan work, right? He had, to, he had to earn it. But he didn't play bad in the finals. It was an ugly finals, guys. It just was. But yeah, man, we all know, man. Shout out to Michael Jordan, man. Shout out to Dennis Rodman, man. Like I said, it takes away nothing from Dennis Rodman's performance. He just was not the finals MVP in 96, guys. Michael Jordan was always the X factor in every single championship, every single finals. It was him. We all know that. It doesn't matter what people think about his offensive rebounding or the, the defense that Dennis Rodman played on Sean Kemp. Ron Harper played just as great defense against Gary Payton. Michael Jordan was playing great defense against Gary Payton. He was playing great defense against Hersey Hawkins. They were playing great help defense against Sean Kemp. It wasn't just Rodman by himself. The Bulls were a great defensive team. All-time great. Catch you guys on the next one.